Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Comics Cinema Conversations. I'm your host, Tanner, and today I'm joined with my good friend, Joe. Hello. And today we'll be covering MCU Phase 2. Last time we did Phase 1. Today we'll be doing Phase Number 2, which, looking at the screen, came out in a pretty short time. Uh, The first movie, Iron Man 3, came out early 2013. And the last one, Ant-Man, came out summer 2015. So pretty much two years. And we got six films. And these films, there's a lot of great ones, a lot of bad ones, a lot of unique ones. It's definitely the most, I think, mixed bag for me. So starting off with Iron Man 3, this film I really like. Um, I remember there's a lot of hype around the film. Um, I think it's one of the highest grossing MCU movies, definitely in top five, I believe. I think. It was higher, but then Endgame and Infinity War kind of took it over. But this movie was really hyped. Um, I remember seeing it in theaters. I think it was the first MCU movie I saw in theaters. This idea of Iron Man going rogue. And I really loved loved the film. What I really like about the movie is the direction of Shane Black. Uh, I like a lot of his films. I think he has a really good hand on kind of down-to-earth action, especially with the nice guys, which is a very underrated movie um, as well. And what I like about Iron Man 3 is I think we really see Tony Stark become this really great character. Iron Man 1 and 2, I wasn't the biggest fan of, you know, those films. And I like Iron Man a lot in the Avengers movie, but I feel like Robert Downey Jr. really comes into the role as Tony Stark in this movie. His quips on point, you kind of get him without technology. And I think he really kind of embodies this role and i do like the idea of him going off um on his own um you also have pepper Potts, who is good and i also do like uh war machine aka i am patreon this movie uh, he has a bigger role i rewatched this film recently and i like how roadie is involved um and then the big thing people don't like is the whole mandarin twist but i think it kind of works um you know the mandarin's presented is this very terrifying villain and it turns out the mandarin we see at first is an actor but i feel like you still get that threat across and i think guy pierce actually does a really good job as aldridge killian he's not a high tier villain but i feel like he's able to be a serviceable character for the story where it doesn't ruin the film so i like the action i like the tone i know there's plot points about like oh you know the suits getting blown up and the attack on the mansion, which are, I think, somewhat, you know, good complaints, but I think ultimately the style of the movie holds up. I really like um, this film, so I'm uh, interested to hear what you think of it, Joe. I think there's elements to this movie that are really good and elements to this movie that are really bad, so it's kind of a mixed bag for me. I like that it attempts to be more of a a character-driven film, and mm-hmm. focus on uh, Tony Stark's post-traumatic stress disorder. I like that it gets into more of his uh, personal relationships and how he's kind of affected people throughout his life. But I do think that this movie is kind of hampered by some of the plot decisions, such as the Mandarin twist kind of brings it down for me. And then it also has probably the dumbest moment in the MCU, in my opinion, which is when. Tony invites the Mandarin to his home address and basically tells him to attack him and does absolutely nothing to prepare for the attack. I don't know. Just I, I rewatched this movie not super recently, but enough that I remember most of it. And that I just couldn't get over that moment because it just felt so out of place and just not like a good it didn't didn't feel like it made sense for the characters to act that way. I don't know. I like other Shane Black movies, but this one, I'm not a big fan of. Have you seen The Nice Guys? Yes. Okay, because I think this film does have stuff in common. I like the way Shane Black directs this movie. It has good energy. It has kind of this retro feel of the music. I really like in this film how you know there's this element of humanness. You talked about Tony with the PT esteem kind of dealing with that. I think you know, Iron Man in the comics, he's a very deep character. There's a lot of 
um, issues he has. And I like how this movie addresses it. The plot holes just never got me. I feel like every movie has them. What you talked about him telling the Mandarin to attack him, I feel like that was almost kind of Tony being way too confident. It was kind of using a character flaw. One thing I don't like in this movie is the suits blowing up because Iron Man 3 for me has always kind of been comparable to the Dark Knight Rises. You know, you both have those heroes, you know, Iron Man in this movie, no suit, Batman, the Dark Knight Rises coming out of retirement. They both go through downs. The difference is Dark Knight Rises is the end of the trilogy. So you're going to have that character retire. In Iron Man 3, when you blow up the suits, you're like, well, he's still in like five more movies. So that kind of takes it down for me a bit. Um, I do like, though, how the character of Harley Keener is used in the movie. It was great to see him back in um, Endgame, but I like him in this movie because I think there's a good relationship with him and Tony that kind of sets up the Spider-Man relationship later. Um, I don't have that much else to say. Oh, um, if I do have to go into flaws, also the character of Maya Henson, Rebecca Hall's uh, a great actress. I just didn't like the character a ton in this movie. I would go kind of like 8 out of 10 for this movie. If I was doing an MCU ranking, I'll probably go like B tier. It's my favorite out of the three Iron Man movies. So overall, I like this movie. Uh, Joe, if you want to give your final thoughts and grade on it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention this is this movie is based off a, a really good Iron Man comic called Iron Man Extremis, which I prefer over the film. And it actually is interesting because uh, Maya Hansen is actually revealed to be the, the main bad guy in the comic. And I know they wanted to use that in this movie, but some of the the head honchos at Marvel's didn't think like her toy would sell if she was the bad guy or something weird like that. So that's why that decision uh, didn't go through and why Aldrich Killian was made the bad guy. So I think it's kind of a shame that this movie probably could have been more interesting than it was if there hadn't been interference from some of the, the top people at Marvel. But overall, it's not a not a bad movie. It's just not one of my favorites. So I give it like a six out of ten. What do you say? It's your favorite Iron Man movie? No, I prefer the first Iron Man. Okay, yeah i I didn't know that about that. Uh, Maya Hansen was going to become one of the. She was going to be the main villain. That would be great because Rebecca Hall is really talented. Oh man. Okay. Anyway, so Iron Man three. Uh, we do have differing opinions, but I do ultimately understand your where you come with, um, from it on with Joe. Anyways, now we go to Thor to the Dark World. I'm going to make this simple. This is by far the most bland and one of the worst MCU movies. We see cool Asgard battles, but they're never fleshed out and they're left bland. The on Earth stuff doesn't work in this sequel as we saw in the first one. The villain is forgettable. The emotional moments where Thor's mom dying doesn't work. And ultimately, the connection to Jane Foster. Natalie Portman's talented, but I just don't think the character is written well. And Loki, you know, they try to bring him in to save the movie, but it doesn't help. Uh, it's directed by Alan Taylor, who's done some Game of Thrones stuff. And, uh, you know, I want, he seems like a nice guy, but I watched some interviews with him. And he just kind of had no sense of direction for the story. He was, I think, running because he knows this, like, magical world. But all he talked about was the sets and effects. I'm like, okay, where's the story? So, uh, yeah, Thor 2 is one of the worst MCU movies, if not the worst. I might dislike Iron Man 2 more, but I think Thor 2 is the worst main movie. Um, I think this movie could have been a good bridge between Thor 1 and Ragnarok because Thor 1 is kind of this human coming of age hero story Ragnarok's is like really crazy movie I think this could have been a good bridge I wish we saw more of kind of the Asgardian mythology but we really don't um I'm gonna make this one quick I don't have a lot to say I'm gonna give this one a uh a, a five out of ten I think it's my worst I think it's one of my least favorite MCU movies I think most people agree with that so um yeah that's all I have to say about this one if you want to say your uh, thoughts on it Joe 
I feel like this movie in general just feels like very much wasted potential. I know uh, Patty Jenkins, who directed Wonder Woman, was originally supposed to direct it. And her being replaced by Alan Taylor was kind of a reason why Natalie Portman decided to step away from the MCU for a little while. Uh, it's interesting. This movie is written by some very talented writers. Uh, Christopher Yost, who also wrote Thor Ragnarok and was behind the, uh, the Avengers cartoon, The Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And it was also written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen uh, McFeely, who have written a bunch of good Marvel movies. So I think it's interesting that this movie just didn't really come together for whatever reason. It has a talented cast who also feel pretty wasted, especially Christopher Eccleston as the main bad guy. I feel like he was pretty wasted in this movie. Overall, it just feels kind of bland and, and boring. I feel like everyone's kind of trying their best, but they don't really shine through. So I don't really have a lot to say about this movie either. It's just not very good in my opinion. So I'd give it like a four out of 10. Yeah, I like the points you brought up. It has talent. This movie feels like a product. This is, I think, the first time where the MCU felt like a product instead of a project that had passion behind it. Usually when I see movies, I kind of like them at first, and then I kind of let my thoughts settle in and give it a grade. But even when I was watching this film for the first time, I did not like it. Uh, we're going to go a complete kind of 360 as we go, or 180 as we go, to Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Uh, in my opinion, this is one of my favorite MCU movies. It's easily top five for me. I love this film so much. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, condense this as much as possible. But what I love about this is how they take the character of Captain America and put him in a setting of this more realistic um, worldview, but they don't stray away from the character. Throughout this movie, Captain America is like, what's going on? Why? And you can see that his views are getting challenged, and I like that. I think the transition is really well done. And I think overall, the idea of kind of secrecy and privacy is handled perfectly in this film. This movie could have been like really preachy or too on the head or too like, oh my gosh, you know, kind of in your face, but it really does a great job not feeling that way. And I think a lot of that has to do with the writing team and the directing of Joe and Anthony Russo. This film feels like a spy thrower. I love the Jason Bourne movie, Bourne movies. This movie feels like one of them. It just has that, you know, kind of spy thriller theme that's always on your toe. I remember when I first watched it, like when Nick Fury gets attacked, I'm like, what's going on? The movie has a lot of those fantastic moments that keeps you guessing. Um, I love the score as well in the way it's shot. It's a very smooth movie with action, which is kind of rare in, Hol uh, in Hollywood. So uh, Trent, uh, I might be butchering, but Opalach, uh, you know, he's done, looks like some cinematography forever for other MCU movies. So. Uh, he did a great job. I think really the um, directing by the Russo brothers, they do a great job. And I think this might be my favorite MC movie that they did. Um, Infinity War and Endgame are close. I do like this movie more than Civil War. The cast is also great. Chris Evans is fantastic. Um, I really like Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. This might be my favorite performance of hers. Yes, She's great in other MCU movies, but I feel like she really steps into the role here. I like the friendship that Steve and, her, uh, Steve and her have. And I like how it's just a friendship. It's something that feels very natural in this movie. And this movie feels like a very good sequel to, to the Avengers where these characters have developed to form close friendships. I really like that. Uh, Sebastian Stan's good as the Winter Soldier. Um, you know, he's threatening. There's some cool fight scenes. They set him up. Um, uh, I really like Falcon's introduction. I kind of like how in this movie you have, you know, Sam, uh, you have Cap's kind of former friend and then a new friend in this um, film. And I think it sets up the future of those two characters greatly and then why they kind of contrast each other. I um, also like how Shield's in this. We have 
more Maria Hale, who's one of my favorite MCU characters, more Samuel Jackson. And I could go on and on. I think the Winter Soldier just hits on the theme it tries to go to in the characters. So this movie gets a lot of, a lot of praise for an excellent reason. I love it. If you want to say your thoughts on it, Joe. I think you covered uh, most of my thoughts on this movie pretty well, so I don't have a ton to add, but I'd agree with you just that in general, this is one of my favorite MCU movies, and it feels like a great action spy movie. Uh, everything about the movie just really works well, like cinematography, directing, acting, uh, soundtrack. It's just a very well-made, well-put-together film that was definitely one of the, uh, the turning points in my mind for like realizing the MCU could be could have really good movies. Yeah, and that's a good point. This movie has a great uh, kind of that turning point, and it kind of follows up. The movies follow up with it. Joe, have you you seen District Nine? Correct. Yes. Did you like that movie, The Way of Shot? Because it's the same cinematographer for that movie. Yes, and I can kind of imagine some similarities now that you say that, just the, the way the action is shot. It kind of, they both kind of use shaky cam, but not to the point that it's like distracting, which I think is one of the reasons why the action in The Winter Soldier is so good. Yeah, um, so yeah, Trent... Oh, Pal Lutch, um, cinematographer. He's done other MC movies. Really like his work here. What do you think of Robert Redford in this film? Because he's, you know, a classic actor. He's done so many classic movies. Um, and I really like him in this film. I think he's definitely one of the better MC villains. He's threatening. He's intimidating. I think he hits his role uh, really well in this film as Alexander Pierce. Yeah, I think he does a, a very good job, and it's cool that they got a more kind of experienced actor to join the cast and play off everyone else. Yeah, because in this movie, he's going against Nick Fury, so seeing Robert Redford and Samuel Jackson go at it, it's really cool, so I do like that point. Um, what do you think of the way um, Bucky, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, is utilized in this film i think he's utilized very well and i feel like i actually kind of feel like after this movie it felt like the mcu didn't really know what to do with bucky so i think his his return and his role in this movie is very good but i i, I felt like after this it never really felt like they knew what they wanted to do with him yeah, um, I guess we'll talk about Bucky here for a bit. I felt like he was either way too serious or way too joking. Like, he has some good moments in future MCU movies and shows for sure. But I feel like that Marvel never really knew what to do with him. It's the same with Vision, um, who we'll talk about soon. So, yeah, I do agree with that point. Um, a character who I think, like I said, introduced well is Sam Wilson as Falcon, I think the setup is great, but it doesn't feel like setup. It feels like this great story. And since we both love uh, Captain America 1, you know, you can just plug that character as Steve Rogers in this film and the way he reacts to stuff is great. Chris Evans, you know, gives a really good performance. So, yeah, I think that Winter Soldier is really well done. I like kind of the Hydra is in S.H.I.E.L.D. I just think that's such an interesting concept. And it's performed so well. Uh, I'm going to give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, definitely one of my favorite MCU movies. If Joe, you want to give your final thoughts and grade for The Winter Soldier. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It's just overall a very solid movie that definitely gets the, the praise that it deserves. Yeah. What well, is? Would you say it's a fair Captain America movie? I I constantly uh, am like going back and forth between Captain America one and Captain America two as my favorite of the the trilogy. I just would say Winter Soldier I like better because I think it has a bit more complex themes and ideas, but uh, I think both movies are pretty great. 
All right, so next up here we have Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I People often label this film the surprise of the MCU. And yeah, I mean, when this movie came out, not that many people knew how, who the Guardians were, but I think more of this film is using the great talent and combining it. So what I mean by that is James Gunn has a very distinct style. I feel like he really knows pop culture in a way where he doesn't, use references all the time but he can do it to a point uh being funny and making a point like a lot of the songs it's not just hey you know that's a great song it's oh the song's trying to tell us an emotional story um so i think that's something that's really well done yes people say this is an awesome soundtrack yes the songs are great in it but they're able to tell the story and i think a very unique way and then you have the cast which is fantastic uh Chris Pratt uh, is fantastic as the character of Star Lord. You know, he's this quipping Indiana Jones, Han Solo type of character, but there's added emotional depth. You know, the first scene is a very traumatic scene. And I think overall, Chris Pratt, you know, he's a huge star now, but I really love him in this movie because he's able to strike that balance as Star Lord, who I think is a great character. Yes, he has similarity to other characters in the MCU, but I think he's also his own character and i think there's a lot of great moments um yeah you know kind of a mix of like a han solo mario mcfly you know he has a quipping but also great character development and i think this might be my favorite movie with star Wars. you also have gamora who i like i i think zoe saldana plays this character very well she's a great addition to the cast and she has a lot of great moments i really like drax in this movie uh i don't like where drax goes because Dave Batista, he's had some good comedic stuff in his career, and he is funny. I think this film does a good job with him being funny, but also being like, hey, you know, being this serious character, future movies, it's just like Drax is constantly funny, which I just don't like. I like how he's a mix of the two, and I think that makes, makes him a good character. I love Rocket and Groot, you know, kind of the Han Solo, Chewbacca roles. You know, we have this character in rocket who is great um i haven't seen bradley cooper and other stuff i want to though because he really sells the character of rocket raccoon vin diesel's Groot is great uh Groot, uh, I, I like adult Groot. it's just you know magic in a bottle how they make this character endearing um you know ronan the accused in terms of villain is not the best villain but he's menacing does his job i think if this movie had a really big like bigger than life villain like Loki, I think it would be distracting with the other personalities of like a Groot, a Rocket, and like a, a Star Lord. I think the movie would seem unbalanced. I like how the cast comes together. There's a lot of great moments of setup in this movie through what we see. It's not just talking, it's the action we see. It. So Guardians is a movie I really like. And this movie has a lot of appeal. A lot of family members, um, you know, of mine have seen it and, you know, like, grandparents parents aunts uncles a lot of the people who have seen this movie they don't like the other mc movies but they really like this movie so i think this film has such a wide appeal and i think that's just kind of the cast coming together it's a movie that you know feels like other stuff like a star wars and the avengers but it has its own ingredients that for me make it great so i i really like guardians of the galaxy a lot If I'd won. agree. There you go. Awesome. You so, can yeah. say your thoughts on that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd agree with you just that I think it's a great movie and it's really cool how James Gunn was able to introduce all these characters and give them like compelling backstories and interesting personalities and have them all like interact in cool ways and introduce them all in this one movie and have it be a huge success taking these characters that not that many people know about and making them household names. I think this movie has a better balance of like comedy and drama compared to the sequel, which we'll talk about later. But overall, I enjoy this movie quite a bit. I do think it could have had a stronger villain. I think Ronan is probably the, the weakest element of the movie for me just because he's not super interesting 
I think Lee Pace gives a good performance, but just the character isn't written super interesting. The question I have with that, though, was if Ronan was just like scene stealing villain, would that have been too much? I, I guess is my only kind of like question with that. Yeah, that could be. I just think he could have been a little more interesting because he's just kind of, he feels kind of generic to me. I, I think they could have found a way to make him more interesting without taking away from all the main characters. Yeah, I see what you mean. One thing I, I was looking about this is the movie is written by James Gunn, also by Nicole Pullman, who also wrote Detective Pikachu, um, which kind of has similar style. So that's cool to see. Joe, have you seen um, Bradley Cooper and other projects? I have not. Okay, neither have I. I know he was really good in that one uh, movie. I forgot the, the song one. Um, uh, what, what is it called? The one he did? It's like a music movie. Uh, Star is Born. Yeah, and then also there's this, uh, I know he's did number one called like The Silver something or and I, I just feel like he's a really great role for the character of Rock, and I think he has a great comedic element while also being endearing. And that's what I like about the Guardians. They're different, but they also share similarities. I like the way they come together. Uh, Joe, do you have a favorite Guardian in this movie? Or is there a character you think is portrayed like perfect? Uh, probably Groot, especially compared to his portrayals and later movies i think they use him perfectly in this movie yeah i would say groot also star Wars. i don't know andrax i just feel like that guardians the thing about guardians i feel like it's great yes the humor is very funny the songs are great as i said they help with emotion but it's also that emotion there's some sad scenes in this movie i feel like future movies with the guardians is just like let's go full comedy all the songs all the colors I'm just like, it's sometimes a bit too much. Um, do you have a favorite song on, on the soundtrack? It's been a while since I've seen this one, so I couldn't think of one off the top of my head. What about you? I like the opening one um, like with Star Lord on the planet, trying to get the thing at the end because it's kind of this retro and kind of, I think, theme that sets the theme for the whole movie um but yeah i i really don't have that much else to say i think guardians of the galaxy is my second favorite mcu film probably behind the first avengers i really love it it really reaches a wide audience i want to give this one um a 9.5 out of 10 as well so joe if you want to give your um thoughts on the film yeah i don't haven't I think I've kind of covered my thoughts already just that it's a very good movie and I think it had a better balance of of themes and being like a comedy while also having some uh more sad and kind of introspective moments compared to the other ones so yeah I'd say overall I enjoyed this movie and I'd give it an eight out of ten all righty, so now if Age of Ultron viewers on my channel know my thoughts on this film, I'm not a huge fan, but I actually want to hear what you think of Age of Ultron, Joe. I don't think I've ever asked about your thoughts on uh, this movie, so if you actually want to start us off here with Age of Ultron and what, what you think of it. I do remember the, uh, I think it was the first trailer for this movie the the one that kind of focused on Ultron and portrayed him as more serious and more threatening and more like creepy and I, I wish that was the kind of movie we could have gotten because that trailer promised a, a much more interesting and uh, just more interesting movie in comparison to the one we got I think uh, this film feels like it kind of loses the the luster that the first Avengers movie had. The, the quips don't land quite as well as they did in the first one. 
the action isn't as good as the first one. Joss Whedon's direction, I feel, isn't as good as the first one. But I don't know. There's still there's still some good parts to this movie because like it introduced uh, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch and Vision. I do feel that this movie you you could kind of tell it felt like it was trying to be more of like a building block to the universe than its own movie. It felt like it was trying to introduce new characters and new ideas and new storylines rather than trying to be its own film. And I feel it kind of suffers for that. Yeah, I agree with what, what, what you said. I really do not like this movie. The main issue I have is the tone they went for. The first Avengers, the comedy works because not only is it funny, but it's used as banter. In that first film, all these characters are getting introduced. So the jokes, I was like, oh, you've seen these two worlds collide. Like you said, in this film, it doesn't land as much because it's just jokes for the sake of it. Um, Ultron is so disappointing. It's honestly, I think, one of the worst aspects of this movie. Uh, and ever since I first saw the movie, I, I really wasn't a fan um, of Ultron. James Spader is super talented. Blacklist, great show. He's really good. At it. He's menacing. You're like, do you trust him or not? He is funny in the Blacklist TV show. But he's also very like, uh-oh, what's going to happen? You know, you're on edge. And I just don't do that with Ultron in terms of the writing. I think that he should have been this very menacing character. And if, instead, he's not. And I think that they try to go for a new, like, Loki, which just doesn't work. I know some people who like this movie. And if you do, that's nice. And they're like, well, Ultron is quippy because he's like Iron Man. Well... I will say, I do like Iron Man in this movie. I think he has some great moments. I think Robert Downey Jr. is very comfortable in the role. But they should have set it up more. They just really rushed Ultron's setup. He's in the movie a lot, just kind of staying there and doing things. Like, I don't feel like there's that threat. So that's the big issue I have. Um, a lot of st- other characters, like I like Cap and Iron Man. They're great. Thor's okay. Hulk, I think there could have been a romance with Bruce Banner and Natasha. I think there actually could have been something there. I think there's some good moments. It's just not fleshed out that well. Everyone talks about the farm scene of Hawkeye's family, which is nice. I think it sometimes gets a bit overrated. I I don't I feel like it's a nice scene. But yeah, nothing stands out. Uh the way Vision is introduced is really weird. It's like, oh, he's just there. Um, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are fine in the movie. Quicksilver, in my opinion, should have lived and he should have been killed off in Civil War. So not only does Civil War get consequences, but we see Quicksilver more. I just, like you said, Joe, this feels like a setup movie. Uh, I, I, this movie feels really bland. I tried to rewatch it and I just wasn't engaged. Um, the question I do have, is there anything that I mentioned I dislike that you like uh, a bit more than me not that i can think of all right what what do you think of the whole hawkeye farm scene because everyone's like oh it's a fantastic moment I'm like it's nice it just kind of feels a bit forced in my opinion i think the the scenes with his family were better in uh in endgame honestly like, I, I appreciate this movie introduced his family, but I think they were better utilized in it at the game. Yeah, I I, uh, I agree. I think that they it almost was like, oh, we're supposed to have this, like, down-to-earth scene. I'm like, okay. It's just the movie feels very kind of studio-made. Um, I don't think there's that much to talk about. That's kind of the unfortunate thing with this one. It's a very kind of bland movie. It's a film that it's just kind of there. Um, I also think it's kind of odd because like you have Falcon in this movie and you have War Machine and you're like oh okay that's cool we have some other Avengers but they're hardly in the movie so I just feel like this movie had a lot to balance and I don't know it doesn't feel like an Avengers movie I mean like I said Tony and Cap are great but Thor is on his side mission Hulk has some cool scenes like the Hulkbuster fight scene is cool but i don't know i'm interested to because joe you say you're not a big fan fan of like the plot holes what do you think of hulk 
being just like sent out to space out, out of nowhere. I, I'm interested to hear what you, you think of that. Uh, I don't think I was a big fan of it, and I didn't really enjoy – I haven't really enjoyed what they've done with, with the Hulk and the MCU past Avengers 1, so. Yeah, the weird thing is he just kind of disappears, and everyone's like, oh, okay, it just felt like there's no – emotion behind it and that's a good way to describe this movie it's like well stuff happens i just don't feel anything behind it i'm gonna go six out of ten with this one um i think that there's a good premise here, and i think with technology you could have had a really cool story of ultron and you know kind of the responsibility of these characters i just think ultimately the execution of said film is off by a lot so ultimately six out of ten uh for me if you want to say your grade and any other things you have to add on joe i'd give it a six out of ten as well it just feels like very much a step down compared to the first movie the first avengers movie yeah have you uh have you seen james spader in anything else besides this film i think just the office Oh my gosh, she is in that show. That's right. I, I would check out Blacklist. It's a very, it's like a crime thriller show, but a very unique twist. Anyways, we move on to Ant Man, the final film of Phase Two, and then again, Joe, uh, if you want to start us out on Ant Man, because I'm interested to hear what you uh think about this movie. Sure. So overall, I enjoy this movie. I like it a lot more than the sequel for reasons we'll get into next time. But yeah, I think this is a, uh, a good movie for, for a good first movie for Ant-Man and for introducing all the characters related to the the Ant-Man mythology. Um, I believe Paul Rudd was a great casting choice for Scott Lang and especially uh, what they do with him in the later Avengers movies. They really do a good job with developing his character. But I think they had a strong start to begin with here, thankfully. Um, the screenplay is interesting because I know Edgar Wright was originally supposed to direct this. And I think his contributions to the story helped uh, helped make it better to me, for me in comparison to the sequel. Uh, yeah, overall, I think this is a very good uh, origin movie, even if it feels kind of like your usual MCU origin movie. I think they do enough stuff to make it feel different and stand out. What stands out um, to you in this movie? That's a good question. Um, I think they just do a good job balancing the humor and the action and the more serious moments. I think the the cast plays off each other pretty well. Um, I think it's a it's a fun origin movie. Yeah, so I really like this movie too. Paul wrote his perfect casting and as the viewers can see, there's a quote that Kevin Feige said about Paul Rudd. I was someone basically it's you know the character of Scott Lang you know, has a very interesting back story being a criminal, but Paul Rudd plays a character you can root for. And I really like that. Paul Rudd has become a fan favorite and he deserves it. He is fantastic in this role. He has the humor, but also the human elements. And that's what I really like. I love Edgar Wright's movies. I don't know if I would have liked him directing this movie. A lot of Edgar Wright's movies are great visuals, but really the stories are not, it's more of, okay, a very basic plot, like stop the person. They're not very kind of emotion-based. And I think there's a good family story in here and you can still get cool action. I think Peyton Reed, I don't know what else he has done in his filmography, but I think he does a good job directing this movie. The shrinking scenes with Ant-Man are very cool. Uh, It's very fun to watch. I feel like that, in mcu phase two you got some really cool action you know like in guardians and ant-man some different views on the mcu and that's what i like about it um i think michael douglas he's kind of one of those great hollywood actors 
and I like him in this movie. Like we kind of said, how um, how the MCU brings in these like veteran actors. I like how they do that. With, uh, Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. Um, I think that he's great in the film, and you know he's the mentor character, but he also has some really good moments. And Hank Pym is a very big character in the MCU, so I like how he's given a big role in this movie. Um, you know, they introduce Wasp in the movie as setup, which I like. I think overall, um, the character of Hope, you know, plays off uh, of Scott Well. The humor is really great with Mike Michael Pena as Lewis. Uh, you know how he recaps things. That's become a staple. Even the villain, uh, Darren Cross, you know, Yell Jacket. I think Corey Stoll plays the character pretty well you know he's not a fantastic villain but i think that he's fine in the movie so overall i really like the movie there's a lot of just fun action scenes in there it's a very likable film which is nice it's a film that as joe said it's just a nice origin movie and sometimes that's hard to do um i just think the character of ant-man's really fleshed out i like the way the suit looks too and i just think it's kind of like a new take on the character, but there's some new elements. Joe, I know you're the bigger comic book fan out of um, the two of us. So was there like a certain comic that was adapted? Because I know that a majority of the Ant-Man comics is Hank Pym in the suit, not Scott Lang. I'm, I'm unsure if it's based on any specific comics. I know personally I'm uh, more used to the Hank Pym version of the character. So this was definitely uh, very different to me, but I think they did a good job uh, introducing both Scott Lang and Hank Pym, even if Scott Lang is more of the the MCU's Ant-Man. Okay, yeah, I think that Scott is developed uh, well in the movie. Do you have like a fair action sequence in the movie or just one that like really stands out to you? Probably the, I, I, it's been a while since I've seen this, so I could be misremembering. I don't remember if uh, Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket, if they have multiple fights towards the end of the movie or if it's just one. Do you, do you remember if it's multiple fights or if it's just one? I think it's one. The one I like is like when they're fighting with like the Thomas the Tank engine toy. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, that, that's probably my favorite fight scene. Yeah, it's just, you know, a film in Ant-Man that's very just likable it's rewatchable in the mcu one thing about phase two is is that each film kind of has its own genre um and i think ant-man's just fun heist movie very similar to oceans 11 i think the character is likable uh you know he's a quipping guy and i think he could have been very similar to iron man but i think there's differences you know i've seen this video i really like iron man in phase two and i feel like we've really seen iron man kind of you have this big celebrity guy dependent on big technology. I like how kind of phase two ends with Ant-Man, this person who's a bit more low key and relies on kind of a different type of technology. I think that's a really cool thing to see. Overall, I want to give this film an eight out of 10, just a very nice movie. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Ant-Man. Joe, if you want to give your great and final thoughts for Ant-Man. I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. I just think it's a, a very solid MCU origin movie. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Now, a question I do have is, how much influence do you think Edgar Wright had? Because you said that you think, like, some of the final product has a lot of Edgar Wright. Like, how much do you think his ideas were implemented in the movie? It's kind of hard to say because I haven't seen any of the, the script or anything, but I think uh, I know he has a story and a screenplay credit and uh, Adam McKay also helped with the screenplay for this movie. So I think those both Edgar Wright and Adam McKay's creative styles kind of mesh well and create a, a good movie. I can't remember who wrote the, uh, the sequel. I do not know off the top of my head. What has Adam McKay done? It looks like he's done some SNL stuff, which I can kind of see in this movie. 
I know he did the uh, the big short in Vice, and he has a new movie coming out with uh, DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, okay, that's neat. Yeah, looks like he's had a good body of work. Um, yeah, I don't know who did the second one. I think it might have been Peyton Reed. I honestly don't know at the top of my head. Um, but anyways, Joe, do you have any thoughts on Phase Two? I think Phase Two. Definitely is a lot more engaging than Phase 1. Films like Winter Soldier, Iron Man 3, Guardians, Age of Ultron, Ant-Man. Thor 2 is the most basic, but all of those films have something going for them. I think it's very hit and miss. I think ultimately the hits are great. I, you know, I like a lot of the films here, but the ones that miss are really bad misses in my opinion. Yeah, I'd agree with you. This, this phase overall felt very hit and miss. And I think it's it felt like the MCU was still kind of trying to find its footing and figure out what it wanted to be. Yeah, I, I do think it gets things going because Iron Man 3 grossed a lot of money, split kind of opinion. Thor 2, no one likes it. Count America, went to search what people love. People love Guardians. Age of Ultron, seems like people thought it was nice. Same with Ant-Man, so... I think that is kind of a good setup, so that way Phase 3 can really get going. Ultimately, this is my second favorite phase. Um, I think that's better than Phase 1. Um, you know, it's definitely a phase that really got into the MCU. Um, I saw Age of Ultron and Ant-Man in the theaters. I saw Winter Soldier a lot, so I, this was kind of the phase I got into Marvel. Um, I ultimately like it. Um, Joe, if you have any other thing to add on before we end. I don't have much to add. I agree with you just that it's interesting to look back on this phase and see what worked and what didn't and how how both of those influenced the, the later movie the later movies. Yeah, I feel like phase four could be like phase two. Very unique movies kind of hit and miss. But anyways. That'll be it for this episode of Comics to Cinema Conversations, and we'll see y'all for next time when we do Phase 3. Um, phase 3, I know, has a lot of movies, so we might either do it in two parts. Um, I, I just want to keep these videos at a good pace. Anyways, until then, take care, everyone, and have a good one.